Welcome back, little ones. Welcome back, family members. Glad you all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. Father God, we're going to come to you with a little prayer. Father God, we ask that you guide us. We thank you first and foremost for who you are. Thou art our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day in you. And we glorify thy holy name to God, be all the honor, the praise, and the glory. We love you with all our heart, our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belongs to you and only you. And we ask, Father God, we surrender ourselves to you. We give you as we present ourselves as a holy living sacrifice, spotless, blameless, unblemished to you, Father God. And, and uh, we ask, Father God, that you please uh, guide us to all truth. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your holy angels watching over us each and every day, all day. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, for the remission of our sins, paid in full. Thank you, Father God, for just your awesomeness. You are awesome in all your ways. Thank you for your holy angels watching over us each and every day. Even now we work, while we work and we play, and also while we rest. And we thank you, Father God. Parents, please, this morning, we ask in the mighty, and thank you, Father God. And this is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Parents, please uh, pray over your children. Lift them up to the Lord that God in prayer. Please do. Lift them up by name. Uncover your children in the blood of Jesus. We all need to be covered and pray for one another. Let us pray without ceasing. Love one another because Father God is love. Uh, have unforgiveness in your heart. Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray you this day that you remove the spirit of unforgiveness from all our hearts. And fill it with your love and your Holy Spirit so that we love one another as you loved us. And uh, with that being said, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Thank you, Father. And also, parents, uh, let us all pray for one another. We are living in dangerous times and we're not promised tomorrow. But our, children's are, our, our children are a blessing from the Lord that God. And he's in their care no matter what happens. Uh, we are not promised tomorrow. So everyone, make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. Right? And love one another with the love of the Lord. Pray for one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And please forgive no matter what happens in your life. Forgive because we're not in control. Father God is. And we thank him. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Well, normally I get a, a verse from 145. But I think this morning I'm going to go right to uh, Psalm 105, which was given to me by the Lord. I'm just going to read it out because it's on my heart. And um, yeah, I'm just going to read it. Psalm 105, 105. <clears throat> oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. I'll say that part again. Saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people. 
to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They shewed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters. They did not rebel against them is what he's saying. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake. And there came diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for raisin. He, excuse me, Lord. <laughs> he gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and brake the trees of their coasts. He spake and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number. And did eat up all the herbs in their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering, and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness, and gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Yes. Do my prophets no harm. Do my, and touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. He put that press out on my heart really hard. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Well, with that being said, we were supposed to do yesterday chapter... Four, which was, was it four? No, excuse me. We we're supposed to do chapter five, and today is chapter six. So we'll do both chapters five and six. Chapter five, Moses and Aaron go to, to the king of Egypt. Moses and Aaron went to the king of Egypt and told him, The Lord God says, Let my people go into the desert, so they can honor me with a celebration there. Who is who coincidental? Look where we are. On. <laughs> who is this? Is the God? I'm telling you, what a mighty God we serve! The God Almighty. Who is this Lord, and why should I obey Him? The King replied, "I refuse to let you go. Let you and your people go." They answered, "The Lord God of the Hebrews has appeared to us. Please let us walk three days into the desert, where we can offer sacrifices to Him. And if you don't, He may strike us down with terrible troubles or with war." The King said. Moses and Aaron, why are you keeping these people from working? Look how many you are keeping from doing their work. Now everyone get back to work. That same day the king gave orders to his slave bosses and to men directly in charge of the Israelite slaves. He told them, don't give the slaves any more straw to put in their bricks. Force them to find their own straw where they can. But they must make the same number of bricks as before. They are lazy or else they would not beg me to let them go and sacrifice to their God. Make them work so hard that they won't have time to listen to these lies. They didn't want them to listen to the word of the Lord, as people don't today. They don't want to enslave people to keep them from listening to the Lord. Back to the story. The slave bosses and the men in charge of the slaves went out and told them, The king says he will not give you any more straw. Go and find your own straw wherever you can, but you must still make as many bricks as before. The slaves went all over Egypt looking for straw, but the slave bosses were hard on them and kept saying, Each day you have to make as many bricks as you did when you were given straw. The bosses beat the men in charge of the slaves and said, Why didn't you force the slaves to make as many bricks yesterday and today as they did before? Finally, the men in charge of the slaves went to the king and said, Why are you treating us like this? No one brings us any straw but we are still ordered to make the same number of bricks. We are beaten with whips, and your own people are to blame. The king replied, You are lazy, nothing but lazy. That's why you keep asking me to let you go and sacrifice to your Lord. Get back to work. You won't be given straw, but you must still make the same number of bricks. The men knew they were in deep trouble when they were ordered to make the same number of bricks each day. After they left the king, they went to see Moses and Aaron, who had been waiting for them. Then the men said, We hope the Lord will punish both of you for making the king and his officials hate us. Now they even have an excuse to kill us. 
chapter 6, the Lord's promise to Moses. Moses left them and prayed, Our Lord, why have you brought so much trouble on your people? Is that why you sent me here? Ever since you told me to speak to the king, he has caused nothing but trouble for these people, and you haven't done a thing to help. The Lord God told Moses, Soon you will see what I will do to the king because of my mighty power. He will let my people go, and he will even chase them out of his country. My name is the Lord, but when I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I came as God all-powerful and did not use my name. I made an agreement and promised them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. Now I have seen how the people of Israel are suffering because of the Egyptians, and I will keep my promise. Here is my message for Israel. I am the Lord, and with my mighty power I will punish the Egyptians and free you from slavery. I will accept you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I was the one who rescued you from the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I solemnly promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it will be yours. I am the Lord. When Moses told this to the Israelites, they were too discouraged and mistreated to, be to believe him. Excuse me, Lord. Then the Lord told Moses to demand that the king of Egypt let the Israelites leave. But Moses replied, I'm not a powerful speaker. If the Israelites won't listen to me, why should the king of Egypt? But the Lord sent Aaron and Moses with a message for the Israelites and for the king. He also ordered Aaron and Moses to free the people from Egypt. The following men were the heads of their ancestral clans. The sons of Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, were Hannah, Pelu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemiel, Jamin, Ohat, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman. Levi lived to be 137. His sons were Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. Merari, I'm sorry. Gershon's sons were Libni and Shimei. Lohat lived to be 133. His sons were Amram, Isha, Hebron, and Uziel. Merari's sons were Mali and Mushai. Of all of the above were from the Levi tribe. Amram lived to be 137. He married his father's sister, Joshevat, and they had two sons, Aaron and Moses. Izar's sons were Pura, Nephag, and Zikri. Uziel's sons were Mishael, Elisheban, and Sithri. Aaron married Elisheba. She was the daughter of Amenadab and the sister of Neshon. They had four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Korah's sons were Asar, Elkanah, and Abisah. Ab Aaron's sons, Eleazar, married one of Putiel's daughters, and their son was Phineas. This ends the list of those who were the heads of clans in the Levi tribe. The Lord had commanded Aaron and Moses to lead every family and tribe of Israel out of Egypt, and so they ordered the king of Israel to set the people of Israel free. God's willing, the end. Tomorrow, that's the way I something else. Tomorrow, God's willing, we come back to chapter number seven. The Lord commands Moses and Aaron to speak to the king. Well, you all have yourself a very blessed day. It's early in the morning, and um, that's why we need to all stay prayed up before we begin our day. May we all, may the Lord thy God keep us all safe. Father God, we ask that you guide us through this day. Keep us safe, Lord. Uh, bless us with uh, discernment so that we see what is before us. Even though we will not see it with our eyes, may we see what's before us uh, through discernment and perception that you give to us. Only you can give to us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. Thank you for our loved ones, our family, and our friends. And may we all live a life of holiness, strive for holiness each and every day. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God bless you all. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. God bless you. You all have a blessed day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.